Today our focus was dealing with bisectors of triangles in geometry today. So we're going to deal with several theorems and really their converses. Let's take a look at the first one. In our first theorem, the perpendicular bisector theorem, first of all, perpendicular and bisector are two things that we've dealt with before. Perpendicular has to do with the 90 degree angle, and bisector has to do with cutting things in half. So on this one, it's considering this line right here, CD, to be a perpendicular bisector. So first of all, I'm going to add that piece here. Now, if this is a perpendicular bisector, not only does that 90 degree angle happen, but this piece AD and DB are also going to be equal. So that's kind of this first part of the if part of our if-then statements. And then it says that any point on this perpendicular bisector is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. So the endpoints of our segment are A and B. So actually what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to add a line in there from C to A and C to B. Oops, and an extra line there we got. Okay. And now our job is going to be to go through and know that when this point touches the end of A and B, that these two are also going to be equal to each other. So that's going to be kind of our focus today, is dealing with the 90 degree angle and bisecting. Now this happened to bisect a segment. Remember, bisect means to cut in half, or to cut to two equal pieces. So let's take a look at what happens when it's an angle. So first of all, this theorem 5.3 is a converse of the ones we just talked about. So now this says that if a point is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, that that line has to be a perpendicular bisector. So the nice thing is whether you start with that perpendicular bisector or you start with you know, the, the point that is equidistant from that ends of the segment, either way we can use that theorem. So having the converse as well is a big bonus. Now in this angle bisector, so I have this point D and AD happens to be the bisector of this angle, which means that this angle and this angle are both equal. And what they're going to tell us in this is I'm going to start with my line again. Let's see if I can make it a little smaller maybe. Let's try that. So this line that goes from C to D, from D to B, those are also going to be equal. So that's where we're going to spend the majority of our focus of time in this section, is dealing with bisected angles and bisected segments. So in our first problem, we have this piece right here where they want us to find X, J, K, and J, M. Now I know when I have several things to find, I actually just make an answer box over here. One of the things that's nice about this is once the answer box is filled, you will know that you've solved everything that you need to solve in this one. So in this one, see how these two are equal angles? That means that this JL must obviously cut this angle into two equal pieces. If that's true, then that means this side right here and this side right here, the sides that are opposite those angles, would also have to be equal. So in this case, that means x plus 5 is going to be equal to 2x minus 7. So in this one, I'm going to add my 1 here. And I'm really just going to go through and solve for x first, and then deal with jk and jm. So I'm going to start by subtracting 1x from both sides. These cancel. Okay, hang on just a minute. Let me extend this page a little bit just to give us a little more room. So this is 5 equals 1x minus 7. Then I'm going to add 7 to both sides. And I'll get 1x equals 12. So in this problem, x equals 12 is part of my answer. So I'm going to circle that. And I'm going to pull down the page a little bit, and I'm going to put my 12 here. Now my job is to find JK and JM. So if I look at these two, actually JK appears to be easier to find. JK is x plus 5. And I know that x is equal to 12. 
So 12 plus 5 is going to equal 17. So in this one, JK is 17. Now one other piece to remember in this is that we did talk about early on that these two sides were actually going to have to be equal, which means that if JK equals 17, whatever JK is, JM will also have to be. Because remember how we talked about this is part of that angle bisector theorem. Now I'm just writing this here so you kind of remember what you're doing. But this would mean that JM is also equal to 17. Okay, last piece for my box over here would be that 17. Okay, so here's one in which we've dealt with the angles being bisected. So let's see what we can find with the sides. In our next problem, this one doesn't even f ask us to find any letters. They just want to find the length for AB, BC, and ED. So probably the easiest piece to find is the idea that if this BE is marked with one hash mark of 8, this little hash mark of 8 that's ED is also going to have to be 8. So that means ED is going to be 8. Now we've done this in a couple sections before, but there's a lot going on in this picture. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull a screen up, and I only want to look at just this part of the picture. Now I know these two are both 8, and they're equal, and here's this perpendicular line. So that means AE is going to have to be our perpendicular bisector. So if these two are equal, that means that these two are going to have to be equal as well. So that means if AD is 15, that AB also has to be 15. Now, that's really talking a lot about logic and what's going on in your head. There's not a whole lot of work to show for that. Now, in the same way we kind of covered up the bottom, let's cover up the top. And just look at the bottom. So this is 8 and 8. These sections are equal. And remember, this would also be perpendicular. Remember, all these would be perpendicular in the middle. But again, this is still that perpendicular bisector, because it's perpendicular and these two things are equal, which means that this side and this side would be equal, which means if DC is 18, so is BC. So this one's 18. Now, our big deal with this one is just to really pay attention and make sure we're getting things labeled correctly and paying attention to what's going on in our picture. Okay, let's try one more example. Okay, in this picture, I can see that this angle and this angle are equal, which means that FC is the angle bisector. Now, this also has X, FB, and FD that we're going to solve for. So I'm going to put my little answer key right here. And that also means if this angle is equal, that these two sides must also be equal. So 2x plus 5 is going to have to equal 7x minus 37. Actually, let me scoot this over just a little bit. Hopefully it goes together. Hot dog. Okay. So in this one, if I'm going to solve it, I'm going to solve for x first. So I'm going to start by subtracting 2x. Five equals five x minus thirty seven. I know some of you are already thinking you know this isn't going to come out evenly. You can just tell already. So I'm going to add thirty seven to both sides. So on this side it's forty two equals five x. Okay, let me take a second here. I'm just going to expand this page a little bit just to go up. So if I divide both sides by 5, I'm going to get x equals 8.4. So this is the first part here. I'm going to go back up here and put 8.4 in there. Now, 
I need to find FB or FD. And I do know that these two happen to be equal. And if I look, it probably looks like FB is probably easier to find. So it's 2x plus 5. And I know in this one that x equals 8.4. So if I go and plug this in, 2 times 8.4 plus 5 is going to give me 21.8. Fill this in. We also said we knew these two had to be equal, which means this is also going to be 21.8. Now if you're trying to remember to write something down here, FB and FD are equal because of the angle bisector theorem. So that means that FD is also 21.8. Now make sure you're circling your stuff in your page. I want to make sure those answers stand out and they're easy to find. Again, using this kind of a box up here, this answer key box, will make things much easier for you as well.